Hello, welcome to Anton's TV and welcome to the inaugural Get Your Rig Out. My name is Jack Dutchby, he's the Maltese Falcon. And we're here in Kingston, Prism to be precise, London, England, to go to the live rig of the band Bastille. Let's get into it. Charlie Barnes, where do we start? Where do you believe your rig starts? Where do I believe my rig starts? I don't know. Um, does it start in my soul? It starts. I, I guess like with, with this thing, it all kind of starts at the loop station, doesn't it? Well, it sort of starts and ends at the loop station and comes around and about throughout it. Um, so, new bit of gear, how do you think you're using it? Um, well, in, in rehearsals, we realised that we were using it to the absolute <laughs> limit of its processing power because uh, it was crashing a couple of times in one of the songs. Um, but I worked out a nice workaround. I was just pushing it a bit too far and having effects open in other banks and all that kind of stuff. But it was good. Uh, but yeah, it's like we basically for this tour um, where mostly Dan and I have been going around independent venues in cities with independent record shops. Mm -hmm. um, we've just been kind of echoing our past so he and I both used to do like solo keyboard loop station shows like we didn't know each other at the time but we were both doing that kind of thing um, and when I kind of saw that some of the venues we were doing were actually like you know like prism uh, a case of, like you know thousand capacity venues I was like well we can't just do like a little acoustic show and you know go away so uh, I thought given that you know in the sort of 10 15 years since we were doing it looping technology has come on leaps and bounds uh, it would be a good time to kind of dive in and see what we could do with it. Um, this is brand spanking new bit of kit. Yeah, so they, they only released it like at the end of last year, the, the Mark II. So the RC505 Mark I has been kind of on, on, on every beatboxer's table for I think like five or ten years. Um, and, and yeah, we picked up the Mark II. Essentially, I got the management to buy me a Christmas present. Um, and I started mucking around with it, but I didn't really have much time to kind of play around and experiment because I immediately had to start arranging some of the songs to be able to like play them live on this tour. Um, so I kind of had to get, get, in, get in quite quickly. Um, but yeah, it's, it's And great, feel man. free at any time you can jump in because I think we're recording the audio as well. What bit, it looks absolutely maxed out of the back. What have you got going in out of it? Are you using the effects and are you doing the multi-track looping? Yes, absolutely. So we've, yeah, we're using every hole this thing has got pretty much. We're using the MIDI, we're using both microphone inputs. So like, what's really cool about this one is that because it's got the two microphone inputs, it means that both Dan and I simultaneously can build up those kind of big stacks of vocal harmonies, which is the, you know, it's the kind of classic trick that solo live looping people do and that we both used to do back in the day. But being able to do it both at the same time means that we can get to like this quite big wall of vocals quite quickly. Um, and so we've got effects on those microphones on the way in. Um, and then there's two stereo ins. So one of those stereo ins is coming from a mixing desk we've got down here, which has got all my stuff coming into it. So out of one of those subgroups, it goes into my inputs. Then all of Dan's stuff goes into the mixing desk and out of the other subgroup, that comes into his stuff. Uh, so we've got the kind of two separate channels of uh, things coming in. Again, we kind of pick who's getting what effect where and stuff. I'm doing some pretty gnarly stuff with uh, sort of using some of the pattern stuff in there to try and create like side chain type effects. Um, so like, the, you know, having the, it's got an internal click track, which means that we can have some effects in sync, which is really useful for trying to recreate some of the sounds of, of some of the stuff on the new album. So like, you know, the, that kind of pumping guitar on Shot Off The Lights and uh, some of the kind of choppy stuff in the keys in Distorted Light Beam and whatnot, we've been able to recreate it using this G thing. Kiss a blast. Kiss a blast. All right, kid, I'll give you a blast. Don't you worry about it. Blast. All right, let's go on to Shot Off The Lights. So, here we are. And per patch, you take this, this is doing the time code, basically. Is it, is it setting the tempo? Yeah, yeah, so you basically I've kind of set it up. So we've got each song uh, in the set uh, and you just move to it as another memory, save it, you save all of your kind of effects and stuff. You've got effects on the way in, effects on the way out. So shut off the lights, I'm only using effects on the way in. Um, so we've got a couple of like just reverbs and stuff in there. But then with these guys on the, on the outside, I've kind of cr managed to get this sort of... And that's such a like a big part of the character of that that guitar sound in, in the song that it's you know it's great to be able to actually 
have it in the track and it's sit in sync with with everything that we're doing. What are we hearing there? When, so when, when you're playing that guitar, do you want to talk a bit about the guitar as well? Yeah, sure. So, uh, so I mean, my, my friend at Fender, I'm, I'm not going to take it that it's because I'm in any way successful, but uh, my <laughs> mate Tim at Fender asked me if I was interested in, uh, in one of the Acoustasonic series. Um, and he asked me, like again, it was just before Christmas last year, and, uh, and I said, well, funnily enough, we've got this tour coming up where I really need a variety of sounds, um, so, uh, so that would be amazing. So he, he sent this over to me, um, and like, what's kind of useful about this is that you've got you know, all these kind of, where your pickup selector is, you're picking different combinations of the various pickups that this thing has got within it, um, and on the kind of back position, you've got the electric pickup there, so it's got one, one side of the kind of blend knob is like more of a mellow, uh, it's specifically modelled on something, I can't remember what it is right now, um, but you've got a kind of more mellow sound, so that's what I use for, for the shot off the lights thing. Uh, with the sidechain stuff, and then for another song called Future Holds, I kind of put it up the other way, and you get more of a kind of drivey rock sound out of it without having to bring an amp. Um, so that's no amp? No, no amp at all. So no this amp is, modelling? No amp modelling at all. It's literally just going through, uh, that's just through an EQ pedal. Unbelie um, Unbelievable. We'll do it. the pedals in a minute. So it does those two types of electric sounds, and are you doing straight up acoustic stuff as well? Yeah, so the, the kind of the, the main acoustic sound I'm using um, is... I'm just, just going to go to It's the perfect guitar for this it gig. So, it was like <laughs> so good. So... Um, So yeah, you've got your, your different positions on there, and you can kind of. I just basically found the sound that I liked that kind of felt the most natural to me. But there's even stuff on here where you get kind of. Is that the one, or is it this end? You get so obviously in the kind of world of looping stuff, being able to do a bit of like. I mean, we're not doing any of it, but um, you know, it's nice to know it's there. Um, yeah, so ju just having that kind of versatility from one instrument has been super useful for this talk is like basically every bit of gear we've got has just had to be pushed um, to be able to get the most out of it. We've got a lot to get around. <laughs> so that's the only guitar you've brought on tour? There's, there's one other guitar okay. that we've brought on tour um, because uh, we, we do have like as, as well as doing the kind of crazy loopy stuff we have some slightly more intimate uh, acoustic moments um, right. for which uh, I brought my Mariton. Um, so it's uh, the 00L17 um, which I bought myself as a present a few years ago, um, and I've got the Fishman Rare Earth Blend in and there. And what strings do you like to use? Uh, so it came with like these nickel ones on it, um, and I really liked them, so I've always bought the same ones. Um, and so on they, the acoustic they, they, side, the same thing? I've just got whatever it came with, and I haven't cool. broken one yet, so we haven't changed them. Uh, our, our guitar tech slash tour manager, Fozzie, keeps saying like, so do you think we should change through? And I'm like, nah, I'll be all right, mate. Um, <laughs> and are you uh, fastidious about picks at all? Um, well, we, do, we have like our own, our own little branded guys, but it's just the blue Dunlop ones, essentially. Okay, you're um, blue Dunlop. The, that, that classic one mil does everything you need. <laughs> I love the look of this. When did um, you get this? I, I got this a few years ago, um, probably about like three, four years ago, something like that. Um, and uh, yeah, th this was like my main thing on the MTV Unplugged show that we did last year. Um, it just it just sounds so nice for, for finger picking. Um, it's and did you say what the pickup was? Yeah, so the Fishman Rare Earth Blend. So it's the one with the with the gooseneck microphone on it. For this show, uh, I have been just going with pickup only rather than adding the microphone in. I think the when I went for the one with the microphone in it, I was thinking more about my kind of solo shows, which are in cafes with five people in them. So uh, you can get away with using the microphone, whereas for when you're in a room with a thousand people, you uh, does it just take off? It, when it, it, it can get a little bit excited, yeah, and you get a bit of kind of the body obviously resonating, and it picks it up, and that can get a bit bit mucky. <laughs> so the two guitars, two guitars. Now you said about rhythm, you were like, oh, it's not coming from the uh, hit in the guitar. Uh, I see something that. I've been dying to ask you about up there, and <laughs> I heard it in the sound check. What is that, and is yeah, is that bringing the rhythm? So uh, the the fun thing that we've got got with this, um, so I, I I bought ahead of this tour. We were thinking about all the kind of various people that we wanted to kind of channel influences wise and like stuff we'd seen that we liked. So I mean, a, a big influence on the way that we're doing all of this is, is James Blake. Dan and I went to see a James Blake show in America when we were on tour once and we were both just blown away and loved the idea of, you know, someone creating something so big from completely nothing and really making a point of the fact that it's all live. 
Um, and an, another influence that I kind of I saw a video of and I was like, hey, we should do some stuff like this. Was uh, there was like a, a bright eyes tiny desk or something like that where they were using a load of these cool old, you know, I guess 70s drum machines that don't really have many options and the tempo is on a dial and stuff like that. Um, so we we were using that <laughs> for a while um, until it until it blew up. <laughs> it blown up. It's blown up. When did it blow up? <laughs> it blew up in Leeds. <laughs> oh no, <laughs> so pretty. <laughs> Did so it go mid-show or is it No, it was, it was a sound trip. So, we, you know, we'd loaded in, we'd got everything set up, and we'd oh. not quite line-checked everything, but the venue brought some nice sandwiches down to us, wardrobe and leads, great sandwiches. And uh, we, uh, you know, we were in the middle of the venue having food, and then uh, Dejan, our monitor engineer, was like, has, uh, has the local guys put any haze on the stage yet? And we were like, no, no, why? Oh. He's like, oh, shit, the drum machine. <laughs> so we went sprinting off, and it had, just, it had just blown up. I mean, I guess there's going to be some blown up capacitor or something in there that we can dive in and fix, but we have not had time to get in and fix it. So we, what we've kind of had to do is just, just stick to, to using the classic classic Roland uh, for, for all the drum stuff, and now it's just a stand for my dictaphone. So that was a, a, a maestro rhythm. Maestro rhythm, and, and it sounds so good. so good. I love it. Isn't it weird? I heard it when you were rehearsing. Yeah, and yeah. So it's like, you know, we were running it through this kind of pedal board that the, the dictaphone world is also running through. Um, and just you know, with a bit of drive on it and some cool delays, it was just sounding. So you've, re sounding you've so replaced great. it with the SPDS. Yeah, we've and gone, gone modern. <laughs> let's go through this Shall chain stay on here? this table. Let's do sure. this and go. Okay. Uh, so yeah, so the, the other side of, uh, of of this kind of world with the dearly departed Maestro rhythm is um, the good old Sanyo talk book, um, which I know you are a great champion of. Um, so I kind of wanted to have some like weird ambient background textures available to, to be run in like when we're doing more kind of lilty piano ballad kind of stuff to just have so, we just kind of wanted this, this show to be really weird so this allowed us a kind of a, an opportunity to bring some of the weirdness so I've got it I've got it running essentially at home I recorded a load of just weird like slow stuff on my on, just on my upright piano at home um, and then what's cool about this is it's got a half speed function so I've been, you knock it down to half speed and it kind of drops it about an octave and obviously plays it much more slowly. It's not quite such an exact science <laughs> as that, but, um, but you know, it's, it's cool, man. Yeah. It's, uh, it's vibey, it's warbly. So, um, so something that starts out, I'll just make sure all the effects are off. Oh, having um, a blast. So something that starts out as... You then whack the old half speed on. And it just sounds spooky as hell. And then I've got it going into the whammy, so I drop it down another octave. I've so never seen that before. This sounds horrendous. <laughs> no, it sounds beautiful. And, and then the idea of using the whammy for the pitch shift. To be honest, I kind of brought it in because I thought what I'll try and do is use this as a way to try and get really precise tuning out of it for the background. And then I was like, nah, just all the way down. It sounds cool as shit. Um, and I guess we're, like, we're kind of getting it to be such a background texture that it doesn't matter too much. Mm -hmm. um, so then that's running into the line selector. Originally, that was so that we could combine the dictaphone and the drum machine, but now it's just there. Um, there's a drive pedal that I was only really using for the for the maestro rhythm, so just the full tone OCD, which is you know just classic versatile number. Goes into the M5 where I then split it into a stereo signal. Um, so the M5 I'm just using for a reverse delay effect because um, I'm a I'm a big reverse delay addict. Um, then one side of it goes out to the Red Panda particle, um, which for some of these songs I'm putting the blend up full. And then you get that really super wide, like one side of it is completely wet on this side and one side of it is completely dry on that side. And it just sounds like huge when you're kind of inside it. Is that just on one side of the stereo image then? Because it's a mono pedal. That's right? it, yeah, mono pedal, um, which I mean, it's kind of a limitation, but it's a limitation that I really like. I think it's really cool. Um, so you've got that on one side and the other side? The Boss DM2, I've got the, the updated like Wazacraft version of it. So the, the Boss DM2 is like one of my absolute favorite pedals because um, I'm, I'm a massive ocean size and amplifier fan and those Ooh. guys, it was all, all about this guy and you can do the old, the old spaceship stuff with it, which is always good fun. 
Are you um, running it in the standard or the custom? Mode? I'm the standard. I'm old school, man. <laughs> but I love that idea of processing each side differently to give it an exaggerated stereo image. Yeah, I, yeah, it's totally. It's uh, a great. Um, so it, it, it great sounds thinking. like kind of quite quite big and weird when you get into mm. it, and uh, and then I, I kind of just recombine it in the TC Hall of Fame because. It's, it is a stereo pedal that I had on my shelf. And I was like, okay, you got the job, buddy. Um, but it's, I've mostly got it set on the, uh, the lo-fi setting, which just sounds a little bit, you know, crusty. And, but everything, everything's about being crusty and weird. In, uh, Beautiful, in, in, on this, this table. If this table is crusty weirdness. And so do you have different tapes for different songs? Yeah, oh. yeah, so, so we've got, uh, and, and I've, you know, I've, I've tried to make it look as emo as possible. Um, so, you know, really scrawled it on there, so that's, the song "Give Me the Future" the, Could be from, an the, NFT. From, from the new, <laughs> goodness no, <laughs> from the don't let the record label know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, and then yeah, the, the other tape I've got like the show intro where we're playing. Um, I, I basically recorded the, one of the interludes from the new album "Promises," which is a poem uh, read by Riz Ahmed, who wrote it. Um, and so I just put that in, and then absolutely destroy it with pedals, um, and then we get into the first song. So that's got kind of a fun way to start the show. Um, but it also means that like there are points within the show where Dan has to take some questions from the audience or something because he needs to wait for like five minutes while I rewind these things. <laughs> right, <laughs> nice, nice. Um, I probably could have got some more tapes and saved us that hassle, but you know, no, it sounds it's all real, man. It sounds incredible. <laughs> What's the foot switch doing down there? Uh, the foot switch down here is connected to the SPDS. Um, and a foot pedal, is that? Again, that's also going to the SPDS. So you're um, playing that manually, is you getting a kick drum out of that? Yeah, yeah, so if it, it's only, only for one of the songs. It's like one moment I'm using this and one moment I'm using this. Um, I mean, I imagine if we were doing a longer show and put built more stuff into this rig, it would eventually get used more. But um, so the, the song Future Holds, which we're starting the show with, I'm kind of looping the main beat um, in some of the channels and just using that for, for my kick drum because I needed needed to have a hand spare so it's like so some of the songs I'm just like I'm hitting the kick drum with with my hands because like, I'm not a drummer um, but uh, that's, that was kind of one of the moments where I really needed to have everything free that's what I'm impressed by and that, how do you feel it's gone operating this with your hands I suppose back in the day the loopers were all foot operated do you find you just have to pick your moments in between uh, have you preferred it using your hands and your feet I kind of like a bit of both of it so Back in the day when I was playing, you know, empty cafes in Huddersfield, um, I, I had uh, the Electrics Repeater, it's called, which is like a 19-inch rack unit. It's the same one that Imogen Heap used to use, which is why I bought it. Cool. Um, so that one is kind of set up as like a more of a, a hand-driven loop. So you've got your transport bar and then four faders for your four channels that you can record into. Um, and I really liked that as a, as a method back then because I was more of a kind of, you know, using keys and doing loops with that and building up vocal stuff. I did use a foot switch with it just for some of the moments when you did need both hands. And similarly with this one, I've got some foot switches set up so that I can control it with my feet when okay. I need to. Um, but yeah, so like w when I saw this, I was like, this is, this is great. This is so familiar uh, based around what I, you know, used to do when I was doing this solo, solo loop and stuff. So it, it kind of, it actually doing the kind of purely foot-based thing is quite a foreign concept to me for, for looping so that that kind of you know the, the big classic boss looper that a lot of people have I, I'm, I'm like oh what's going on with this um so yeah, you're managing you're looping on behalf of dan as well which yeah is, yeah you're so doing an amazing job it's uh, like for, for both of us that there's so much like it, it, it it's it's knowing when not to play essentially and, and like we, we were just working out through, all the way through rehearsals, like so I, I built most of the show at home uh, before we came in for our like couple of days to to work this all out. But um, I had some points where I was like, okay, cool, I'll definitely be able to record down here. But then as we were actually playing it, we started to work out like, hey, you could add in this bit here, and I could record that, and then we could do this bit for a bit longer, and you could add something else. And so it, it became like this really nice kind of back and forth balancing thing. So we're both just you know just throwing stuff at it, and it, and it just all the way through the songs, and it's like. You know, it, we're not hopefully not suffering too much that thing of it being like five minutes and then you start the song. You know, we're building stuff up quite quickly and then saving like some of the development happens later on and stuff like that, which is, um, you know, it's, it, it, I, I, I think, I hope it's been quite nice for the audience. <laughs> Have you, uh, word on the street was you were looping the audience as well? Yes, yes. So, uh, so we've, we've got uh, a, another loop pedal on, on my pedal board. So <laughs> let's go uh, through, well, that <laughs> takes us to the pedal board. Yeah. And then we can get around to the, how you're looping the, uh, should we go right to left? Yeah, sure. So or, or uh, if you start on the left, 
Jeff, you go. Where do you think it starts on here? I, I mean, in my head, it goes. It goes into the volume pedal first. So Layla. Layla. The Layla have you volume gone pedal. Are, are you a volume pedal snob, or was that the first one you went to? Uh, I, I, so I, I think I've become a volume pedal snob by accident. Uh, so like when I started playing with Bastille. Um, a lot of what I was doing, uh, particularly with those kind of first album songs where no one was really sure what I should be doing because there wasn't particularly a path <laughs> for me to do. It was like I was, I was like, swelling. Every, time, every single time I was like, so some swells and then some tremolo picking with loads of delays, guys? Cool. <laughs> yeah. um, so the, I was just using those, but I, like the, the boss ones, um, because I was doing quite a lot of jumping around, um, I managed to snap a couple of them in half because um, I'm evidently a very violent uh, guitarist. <laughs> um, but... Um, also, I, ju I just started getting really in my head and fussy about the, the evenness of the volume sweep. And people were saying that apparently this guy is just the, the, the perfect 0 to 100 in a smooth mm. motion. Um, and it's, it's buffered as well, so it like, you know, I, I, that improves the tone, apparently. Um, we well, so do big, long cable runs in venues like this. So exactly, that's yeah, yeah. So um, it's a, that's a, a great... I mean, cool. it's, it's not broken on me, but we've still got... Four shows, five shows left, so I probably shouldn't have said that, um, given how. No, I've got faith in it lately. <laughs> there seems to be like the end game where most people end up. Yeah, totally. So that's, I'm, I'm going out of the direct out of that into my tuner, um, and then that's going into the ZVEX Fuzz Factory, um, which I'm using for the ludicrous solo at the end of Shut Off the Lights. Um, so I'm, I'm just trying to kind of imitate uh, our mate John G who played the rinse in sax solo at the end of that song um, just in a very fuzzy oh, come on, give us a blast way. of this we got the guitar because <laughs> okay. he's such a good player can we got it there I am not <laughs> well I've always dreamed when I watch uh, other rig I'm like get him to play come on <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so yeah so it's shut off the lights finishes with uh, that kind of uh... <laughs> And I try and fit a little bit of cardiac in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you keep that on. You keep that on. We're going around the board, Charlie. <laughs> keep it on. <laughs> All right. We've got the f so the Zvex, and then where and you then going I next? Go into just the Soul Preacher compressor, which is mostly for my kind of acoustic stuff. Just are you uh, an always on compressor chat? Um, if it's if it's on, it's on for the whole song. Um, so I, I tend to just keep it. Uh, it, it's mostly like if I'm finger picking, I like to have the compressor on because I, I don't feel like I'm, uh, you know, I, I don't have the technique to just do it all yeah. in my fingers. <laughs> but it's this smart. Um, and then in, from there it goes into the Boss GE7, uh, which I'm just using to basically get rid of a lot of the top and the bottom. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we sculpt it a little bit now and then uh, in the room. Uh, but it's just, I, I think when you're, when you're doing acoustic guitar and you're using effects and stuff like it, it's just quite a useful tool to have in there to be able to sculpt a little bit because mm -hmm. you know you, you've not got the joy of having a lovely big fat condenser mic here you know you're, you're sort of working with what you've got and it's nice to be able to just push some of the stuff that works from there um, I'm going into the Strymon timeline which you will see currently says test um, because yeah, we broke it uh, oh, <laughs> no. so we're, we're missing the tap tempo foot switch um, which means that it thinks that that's pressed in, so every time we switch it on, it thinks it's in test <laughs> mode. Foot bar and so, uh, <laughs> yeah, so I'm quite good at breaking pedals, it turns out. Um, so that's that's another one to. I basically, I've got a lot of work to do when I get home. Because um, you're, you're a few gigs. How many gigs you've done in this run? Uh, I, there's been quite a lot. So we, we've been doing uh, quite a few of them. We've done two shows a night, um, which which has been great. Like it's, it, it's like I you know I, I love playing and it's nice yeah. to kind of get that sort of different vibe across a couple of shows. You know we're like jokingly referring to the early one as the matinee and stuff like that. It's, it's great fun. Um, but yeah, so we, we've we've done about. I don't know, like 10, 12 oh, right. shows so, it, so it got. How long did it get into the tour before it looked like this? <laughs> Two. Two? No, okay. one. One. We, we did Edinburgh. <laughs> I opened the pedal board in Dundee and I was like, ah. But thankfully, I do still have the switch, so I can take it apart when I get home. So just Probably make it even worse and then pay somebody else to fix it. <laughs> so did you have to change anything when that broke? Well, I, so I, I was only really using it for a bit of like kind of uh, Slapback delay, like one of my favourite like secret weapons I've got at home is the the Dan Electro Fab Echo, like the little plasticky thing, just slapback delay because I, I it's just such a nice thing to kind of just make everything feel a bit bigger. There's um, Art Deco looking. Yeah, 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 I love it. Yeah. Um, so I I kind of just had it as a really expensive emulation of that, and then I was using like a little bit of of uh, just digital delay in there, but it wasn't like the end of the world to not have just those two 
quite basic sounds um, because thankfully <laughs> I've also got the Empress Reverb which I haven't broken yet. Um, so I, I got the Empress Reverb uh, pretty soon after it came out because um, I was lusting after something fancy. Um, and uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm using a lot of like kind of uh, cool reverse, reverse reverb effects on this one. Yeah, so if it, like you know, some of the moments when when I was like, oh, I don't have uh, a delay anymore. I was like, well, I can use a I can use a, a delay and reverb preset on here, and that'll kind of cover cover what I need to do. So I've got you know like reversey stuff, and then just massive washes because there's a lot of you know I'm, I'm bringing as much post rock to this band as I possibly can. Yeah, you are. Um, and yeah, what, who else am I using? I mean, there's a there's a setting on the Empress reverb called Ghost. Um, which is like a really kind of resonant uh, reverb sound. It's just, it's, you know, it's, it's just a little bit extra. Uh, you know, it's like, yeah, nice reverb guitar, but just something a little bit more than that. Um, so it's, I, I love this pedal to bits. Um, it's, uh, yeah, holds a special place in my heart. <laughs> yeah, very highly rated. Into next. Uh, so that then goes into the TC Play Acoustic, um, which is basically it's something that I bought for my solo shows. Um, so it's a effects processor and loop station uh, that you can put a microphone and a guitar into. Um, so it's just, you know, again, you've got a little bit of limited EQ in there that you can use. It does have some other effects in there, but I'm not really using any of them, to be honest. Um, is that for your vocals or for your guitar? So this is just for guitar mostly during this show. Um, but then at the end of this show, I am using the microphone in, uh, and that's where, that's where this guy comes oh, into the mix, which this? is uh, <laughs> my battered old 58 from when I used to tour. And this is what we're using to record the audience every night. So, uh, so we, when we play Shut Off The Lights, uh, Dan and I do this like awful Edinburgh Fringe bit of uh, no. comedy patter. <laughs> and basically just, you know, try and, this show has been all about like participation and inclusivity and that kind of thing. And so, you know, even though we're only touring the UK, we've been doing- It's the like, week of release, right? That's right, so yeah, yeah. So um, we've, we've been trying to kind of make it as worldwide as possible to make it a celebration. And of you're the taking album. requests. Yeah, so we're taking requests, streaming those on the internet um, and taking requests <laughs> from the room, adding those into certain songs in places like Dan does these rinse in like auto tune. Uh, like improvisations in the middle of the songs to get people like their little requests in, but then this is like the audience participation in the loop station age. So we just get them to sing the sing the chorus, and then I'm triggering that during the song, um, and, uh, and you know just playing them back to themselves. So which cool. they, they get such a I've buzz never out seen of. that, and I'm looking it's, forward to seeing it later. Yeah, it's it, you know it, it it's it works. Okay, we do encourage them to still sing along, um, but I, it, it's just kind of a cool novelty for yeah. people to feel part of this. And, and such a great illustration for them of like, this there's is no, how it works, this is how the whole show has and worked. And there's no backing track. Yeah, man, no track except for a bit of dictaphone. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's so Old that, favourite um, Sans amp on there. Yeah, the, the Sans amp. So uh, tonight uh, we've actually got all five band members with us, which is the first time that's happened. But a lot of the tour has just been Dan and I, and then we've done a show that was just. Uh, the two of us with Woody, there's a show that was just the two of us with Kyle, there's been a show that's just the two of us with Will. Um, the ones when Will isn't there, when it gets to shut off the lights, um, I've had to play the bass, um, so I've left it out until the second chorus when I've got, you know, loops and hands free. Uh, and then just, yeah, I've got a second uh, tuner, which is what the bass goes into, straight into the Sans amp, um, and then that goes through the mixing desk into the looper via kind of my sub send, and I'm just using that for just like a nice, just a nice, slightly drivey uh, bass sound, uh, not with too, you know, not too much vibe. I mean, it's no imitation for the beautiful, fretless, you know, kind of uh, Graceland vibes that, that Will's bringing. But you know, it's it, it, it gets us close enough. Um, and I'm, I'm using my uh, my Mustang bass with that. Um, oh, nice! The, it's, the, it's the kind of the, the PJ one. Has he got it about? Nice in the van because we don't need it today. <laughs> oh yeah, he's bringing his fancy yeah. Warwick. Isn't yeah, yeah, he's got he's got his six string Warwick. <laughs> We're getting away with the wildest stuff here. That's so um, great. So that's all the guitar stuff powered by the chocks. 
Yeah, yeah, They're it's uh, it's a very useful tool. Uh, so I've, I've got and th the same underneath this. Uh, I've got so the you're same all thing. Chuck. Yeah, it's. Uh, well, Do you they, say Seox or Chucks? I've I've always said Seox, but now I'm going to say Chucks because that's what you say. It's just because I like the guy in the shop. You know what you're doing. I like the chuck. I don't know. <laughs> right, keyboards. Keyboards. <laughs> Let's do it. You know your one of the rare guys that knows about both sides of the game. <laughs> You're running, uh, and can you speak on Dan's behalf of what you see the keyboard rig being? Yeah, totally. So, uh, so we, we're both running the Nord Stage 2, um, which is when we do a normal Bastille show, um, that's Dan's kind of main keyboard um, that he has for when he's playing piano songs, or also like he, he's running his kind of vocoder stuff through it now. Um, but yeah, essentially that was what was available and we wanted to really minimise the laptop involvement on this show. So that there's like there's one laptop um, and it's not running any tracks or anything like that, it's just for some effects. Um, so rather than using the kind of MIDI stuff, we wanted to use these guys and use all of the internal engines. And it's, it's kind of the first time, to be honest, like just building this show. Um, that I've actually dug into one, um, and uh, it's, it's kind of blown my mind how much it can do. Um, I mean, obviously, the, the piano sounds that it has are great, and I'm going to dive in between some different, you know, upright ones and grand ones for different different songs, different styles. Which upright did you settle on? Who have we got? We've got upright number two is kind of my main guy for. Um, so we can, we can have one. a look. Uh, yeah. Number two is number two. the Queen upright, the Bosendorfer yeah. one. And on the, on the grand, which one are you going for? Because I'm always fascinated uh, so by So I've gone for number one. So, so who's that? That is Bosendorf, grand, Imperial. grand Imperial. I'm a, I'm a Bosendorfer guy. So yeah, yeah. that I'm using for um, we do, uh, when we do the song Give Me the Future, um, I kind of stick a low pass filter on there. Uh, got quite a big hall reverb on that like there's, there's a lot of reverb in this show yeah <laughs> but it, it, it sounds beautiful out front it's testament to the gear i think that you've yeah, chosen as well this, so. this thing is just yeah it's amazing and then we're, we're using uh but that was filtering that's such a clever way to do it because on the two it doesn't have that uh a low pass filter on it so you've used the input effects on yeah the so i'm using that and then we're kind of very cool that's kind of one of the fun things about this looper is that you've got control over effects parameters on these notes. And then once it's recorded, they're track effects. Yeah, so you've got, you've got your input effects here, and, and, and for, for this song, I've got the share effects, yeah! <laughs> um, and uh, you've, you've got different banks on those. Uh, and then the track effects is what you can use for like things when they've been recorded. So, cool. um, like, the song Distorted Light Beam, um, I've got loads of effects going on for that one, and you kind of dive between the banks by double clicking, and then it shows oh, you. Oh, switching banks in the middle of songs. Yeah, so that's kind of where we worked You're out. You're crazy, I was yes, kinda, Yeah, well, you know, we, we, when it was crashing in rehearsals, we sort of realised yeah, maybe you, you I thought shouldn't you match the DSP yeah. out at one point. So I, I think because like each of these banks have got like three or four effects going at once, I think we realised that maybe leaving them on in between, so say I've got four effects on in bank A and then I'm doing something else in bank C and trying to start and stop, it kind of just kept on saying, ouch. <laughs> so <laughs> like, so I, I kind of had to adjust my muscle memory and be like, right, okay, I need to remember to now turn this stuff off before I go over to the next bank, uh, which has been fun. So we've got stuff like uh, in distorted light beam, we've got, where am I? Bank D, there we go. So we've got, we've got like some octave up stuff mm. uh, on both mine and Dan's microphone. So I guess because we're affecting both microphones at the same time sometimes with two effects, it's like so cool. we're pushing it quite hard. Yeah. Um, and then it's got full, where are we, bank A. Uh, so for the song Distorted Light Beam, I've got uh, the... Because that, that sort of talk box effect is such a massive part of that song and this was a way to you know, do a version of it without having to, you know, bring a whole other piece of gear. Um, <laughs> As if you weren't bringing enough. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the, you know, the, the van was heavy enough as it was. It was overweight. We got fined. <laughs> and I saw in the sound check, Dan is doing a lot of, sounds like vocoder, but is that what the computer's doing? That's what the computer's doing, yeah. So this is something uh, that we've kind of borrowed from our main show rig. 
Um, so the, the guys have been working tirelessly to work out how best to, to use this particular plugin, uh, Harmony Engine, in a live context, which is, I mean, it's a very processor-hungry um, bit of software. I mean, because it sounds absolutely amazing. Um, and uh, it's, rather than being like a straight up vocoder, which is essentially what that is, um, it's generating all these kind of fake voices based around your voice. So it sounds a bit more human, but it still has that artifice to it as well. Um, so he, he's using that a lot in this show. Um, and he's like, in some of, the, like, some of the songs, he's got it set so that it's a keyboard split. So, you know, down here is his sub. Here is his harmony engine, here is like a piano thing or something. Other times he's just manually switching on his external MIDI button here uh, when he wants to use it. Uh, which is, you know, like for Dan this has been a really cool show because normally he's, you know, running back and forth along the front, working the crowd, but for this show it's, you know, it's a very different vibe and he's had to be thinking about like pushing buttons and, you know, turning effects on and, you know, he's got uh, cutoffs mapped to some of his synth stuff on the, on the Nord, so it's like, really involved you know physically and w with his hands for him which i think has been really good fun and so you know th there are loads of moments in this show where you know we're both just like messing around with it's buttons amazing. and doing knobs and, and it's like it's, it just feels really different to what we normally do and it's been a, it's been a real blast and he's got um, a few effects on his kind of uh control pad on the top of his keyboard where you know he's got like some big like side chainy reverb things and like a distortion and that's coming from the that's computer all coming room. from the computer and the auto tune i hear him singing with is that using i see you've got the apollo racks there is that running in the console mixer on the apollo or i have so, absolutely no idea i imagine it probably to get that, is <laughs> it's got no latency you can't hear any latency. well i mean so I, I think basically the guys bought whatever the most souped up computer cool. is that you could possibly get i mean th there is like a fractional bit of latency going on with the harmony engine stuff like when i've done line checks before before we've started the proper sound check these there's you sort of need to sing very fractionally ahead, but it is so small. Which, for like, given what this, what it sounds yeah, like, what, the, the result you get, it's it's unreal. Um, but yeah, so I mean, so Dejan, our, our monitor engineer, is changing keys between songs um, because because we're not, you know, we're not running like an Ableton show or anything mm -hmm. like that. N nothing is kind of synced up other than our keyboards and this. So the harmonies um, trigger in the right key, he's changing the key. He's, he's having to do that there so that it's, it's kind of working as more of a standalone unit. The, the only bit of actual like MIDI that we've got is, you know, the MIDI messages coming from Dan's keyboard over to that computer for Harmony Engine. And then I'm sending MIDI out to Dan's keyboard so that he's got some ARP sounds that are in time with oh. what's going on here. Um, and then I've got MIDI coming out from my Nord into this unit for that uh, vocoder talk box sound. Um, so again, we're just like, every hole is plumbed in. Yes, it really is. Um, yeah, and then the, the, the other part we've got is just the, the foot switches. So I'm, I'm, I am using for some of the songs, uh, using the, just the Boss dual foot switch down here, one to control this looper and one to control the, uh, the other looper. When are you going out with the what we you would call your full band rig again? So we've got we've got rehearsals next month, um, and then the the tour starts at the end of March uh, and runs into April, and that's the UK with a little tiny bit of Europe. And, and they're they're Austin arenas, States. aren't they? Yeah, yeah. So it's it's all kind of arenas. So one thing I'd love to do stuff. is, and I'd love for you to see, is come back and come to an arena and see the full guitar rig, right? Because that's how very different, different. It is, yeah, totally different, and it's definitely you know like. The boards have been put together by a professional, not by me. <laughs> you know, it's all really neat and tidy and stuff doesn't break every show. Um, you know, it's, it's a really different operation. You know, like, you t turning up to see a, see a Bastille show and there's like all these just piles of cables going everywhere and it looks like some kind of mess at a, at a local pub. But it's or testament to, that's what I see with you, is like making it work to fit the situation and not just sticking with that rig and changing it. I think you've created yeah, something we really sort of, powerful and special here. We, do, we haven't had the time to, to do anything other than what we've done, really. Like, I mean, we're, the, the looper like, was too low in this, this thing, so rather than get something to build a proper stand for it, we just borrowed your old laptop box. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> it's great yeah, and it's, it's pretty round hopefully but we'll, it sounds good hopefully we can show some of the show and uh, mate thank you so much for mate, doing this a pleasure I love talking can to people, you I know I love <laughs> this is a dream come true 
where can people check out your music? Uh, other so, than Bastille? So the, there's obviously all the Bastille channels and whatnot, and then my own stuff, if you're vaguely interested in that, is on all the various services under Charlie Barnes, which is just my name. And I think you yeah. should go check it out, because you can hear why it all sounds so good. Yeah, you can hear, hear where the weirdness has yeah, come where from, it comes has from. been injected. <laughs> Mate, I love you. Thanks so much for doing Thanks this. Thanks so much, man. This is great. Bye. <laughs>